Thank you very much. Yeah, so this will be actually a, a collection of some cases which uh, demonstrate uh, some of the techniques which we think are really very helpful uh, when you deal with complex thermopropital total occlusions as my potential conflicts. So uh, we actually like the bi-directional approach also for SFAs, not only for ILACs. We really have that, think that they're really helpful, especially in very calcified uh, lesions to be very precise. Here, for example, in this case, we were not able to get the wire back into the true lumen distal here. And uh, we actually start uh, stop relatively early not to destroy these collaterals here distal to the occlusion from my sense. This wire is a little bit too low already here in this area. And when we cannot re-enter, we very pretty much uh, very quickly quick change to the retrograde approach, not to the popliteal approach, turning the patient, but we puncture here. Uh, right uh, at the knee uh, to reach here the distal SFA, distal to the occlusion here, in a patient uh, remaining supine. You can see how the needle, it's a nine centimeter long needle, presses away here the contrast which we inject from above. Ultrasound I find a little bit difficult here because the artery is relatively deep here. You can see here with a sheath this approach how the wire goes into the occlusion. Of course, also from retrograde, you may have problems, you may dissect into the artery, which is healthy, uh, proximal to the occlusion. So also in these cases, as we have shown in the case in Aljax, uh, we try to help with this kind of uh, ballooning from undergrade, this car technique. Um, and it really helps also in this situation. Clearly, we change uh, C-arm positions to show that the wire from retrograft is relatively close to the distal balloon shoulder here. Here, not so much. So you may have to do it at several levels or try to bring those wires a little closer to each other. But eventually, this uh, technique really helps a lot here to somehow uh, yeah, be very precise with what you're doing with ballooning and stenting uh, of, of your artery. Well, in some cases, uh, it may be not so easy to do a double approach because, uh, for example, a flash occlusion. This is very often the case here after surgery, after bypass. How to direct the wire here into the occlusion? That can be really uh, difficult, uh, if not really impossible. So di bidirectional may be really impossible. Here, for example, in this case here, we uh, punctured here distal to the occlusion, and clearly the wire always travels sub intimal here around the patch of the common femoral artery. So in these kind of cases, we need some other solution, and here re-entry devices really help a lot. Here we took an outback catheter in uh, from retrograde, and uh, one stroke uh, with a needle was enough here to bring it into the right place. Clearly, if you do this, there may be a higher bleeding rate because uh, or risk because you have to take six trench uh, into the distal SFA. And uh, therefore, we thought if uh, you want to diminish this risk, why not just puncture the occluded artery instead of the open artery distal? And that's actually not too difficult. This is a case here, a quite desperate case, total occlusion of the SFA. There was surgery done on the groin here. And you can see the occlusion goes down here to the peroneal artery where bypass was attempted but failed because of calcium. And here we tried endo. And you can see here, here we thought to, that we need a re device from retrograde. So we punctured here the total occlusion of the SFA. Just take a 18 gauge needle and uh, of course with this calcium hard to miss this artery. And then we take a stiff angled rumen. If it forms a loop, as you see here, which you used to see if you go to total occlusions from undergrade, uh, you're pretty much uh, within the artery. If it's a big loop, of course, you're maybe in the muscle and you have to puncture once again. We took the wire up, but here was a stop, so we couldn't get the wire further up. What we also, also noticed here, actually, that for the first 10 centimeters of the SFA, the calcium was missing here. So therefore, we called our vascular surgeon once again, and he actually admitted then that he had taken out the first 10 centimeters of this SFA and used it as a patch of the profunda artery. So there was no SFA anymore left. Nevertheless, because, um, I mean, the next step would have been amputation. We tried more, and uh, we tried it again with a stiff angle terumo, which was impossible. Took the back end of the terumo, and that actually led us higher up to the common artery, where they then took a Pioneer catheter, a re-entry device in, and with ultrasound control on that Pioneer catheter, it was actually possible here to get the wire back into the common artery. We snared it out of the groin, took a balloon in. You can see here the waist of the balloon here, how it goes from the patch into the SFA. No bleeding, surprisingly. We have seen this in many cases, that too much scar here prevents uh, bleeding. Nevertheless, we took a wire band in and we uh, continued here with the superior stents downwards here. And this was the result here, and uh, was really a very nice healing. Not always that easy, well, easy. Um, 
Here, for example, another case, also CLI, where also surgery has been done, bypass, also transaction of the SFA, um, where also renal failure uh, is existing. So we did this intervention only with CO2. We also couldn't get in from undergrade here after surgery. We punctured again the total occlusion. And again, this is the technique. Just find some uh, calcium here. Oh, sorry. Uh, find some calcium here and uh, direct the needle to the calcium and then uh, change C arm positions and take uh, the stiff terumo in. And if the loop is small, uh, you must be within the occlusion. We went up, and uh, here we couldn't get close to the confirm artery. Of course, then you can also not use a re entry device. We also tried with balloons and so. And another technique here maybe to take some stiffer devices in, for example, the wingman uh, or the Brockenbrow needle. And uh, with this device, Brockenbrow is clearly not approved for POD, but uh, it's quite helpful to have this needle, which is used <coughs> in cardiac uh, interventions, uh, to come close here to the confirm artery. And here also with CO2 angiography and distant angulations here, uh, you actually can also mark the landing zone for the needle from retrograde with a wire or a catheter from undergrade. Um, with uh, quite some changing of C-arms, we came close here with the needle from retrograde and with uh, a, a stronger push here of the needle, we brought in O14 wire back into the confemoral, snared it, and then we repeated the, the, continued the intervention here from undergrade. And this is here after taking superior stents in with a, a quite nice result. So to conclude, um, I think infraangular CTOs <coughs> can be extremely difficult to pass especially, I think, after previous surgery, also after previous interventions, clearly. Uh, I think aggressive attempts uh, with any means uh, to pass the, gui the guide wire are really, in most of the cases, really very um, worthwhile. And I think the risk uh, doing this is also quite low. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre.